I want you to look at this. This goes back to 1850, right up to the future, 2050, a one century period. Now look there and you're going to see the different colors. The yellow are populations, they're beginning to modernize. They haven't quite gotten as ignorant as we do. They're not living in a cesspool of deadly chemicals and eating fast food. They're not sitting and watching Netflix all day long and thinking that's entertainment. They will still exercise, they still farm in great part, they still go outside for entertainment, they walk, and they do all the things that everyone did for the entire history of the human race. So they're just beginning to go downhill. And so that's the line at the very, very top. And you see that really is only starting now around 2020 or so. The second one is current uh, with modernization. So these are countries, for instance, like Germany and France and England and Australia and Japan and the United States and Canada, and I can go on and I can go on and go down. You know, these are currently doing that. And you're going to look at what that red looks like. So they started to do this uh, about in the 1960s, 1970s. And that's when we started to see health plummet. Uh, that's when I began my work in 1971. And I can tell you, I would often see what I would consider healthy people. Our medical team would be doing reports on them. It's rare I find one or two a year I can put in the same category I did as short ago as 1970s. Now, the inventor of modernization of the planet, let's give ourselves a hand here in the United States, America! And there's the blue. Of course, I use blue for that intentionally. We started to plummet around the Industrial Revolution's invention. Now, the Brits did not, lose, did not win uh, the revolution, but they got us anyway, because they invented industry within a matter of five to 10 years after that, America robbed it and became the industrial giant that created the economy of the United States. So whenever you say, God loves America, and that's why we're strong and we're healthy and we're prosperous. It's because we polluted the very land that was helping to actually destroy the second largest way we collected money, agriculture. We were the breadbasket of the world. So why we became the country we have been, and I say have been, is because we brought industry here. And by the way, we had enough food, not only for our citizenship, but to export globally. Now, that's not the same story anymore. And that started here in 1860, 1870. And look at where we are now in 2022. And now we have choices. If you look there, reversing through restoration. Do you think we're going to put the brakes on completely? Do you think we have leadership in the world? that's even interested in what we're talking about, the survival of the human race, the health of their families, their friends, and the citizenship of the globe? No, they're not interested in that. They're interested in power and money. So we had good leadership, and if healthcare was healthcare, not pharmaceutical distribution, we may want to reverse. And if we don't reverse, we have a problem. The second option we have is we arrest the decline. We just stop being idiots. And some of you are attempting that. That's why you're sitting here listening to me on the real truth about health. But are you doing enough? Because most of you are just happy being moderate and eating you know, soy burgers and singing Kumbaya about how great it is to be a plant-based eater. But it's not enough, I can tell you that. We may arrest it if we get about 25 to 30 times more people doing what we are doing now, even if you do it wrong. But I suspect, and I would vote, and I would actually bet that the last one is going to be the way we go, future decline. So here we are, 100, and 100 years, and you saw the decline. And when I take this and match it up with 
health disorders. Many of these health disorders did not even exist 100 years ago. Diabetic type 2 conditions, non-existent. Cancer, such a small issue, it was less than 5% of the people got it. Heart attacks and strokes, less than 10% of the people got it. And so if you compare today to 57% of us during our life contracting some type of cancer, that half of us dying from heart attacks and strokes, and sadly, you are now taught to be dependent on a healthcare system that's the number three killer, I'm not sure what the outcome's going to look like. It doesn't look pretty to me, I can tell you that. So we're brewing competition. I'll tell you how a good body that's actually supported works. So researchers uh, like Becking actually coined a term, a hypothesis, that everything is everywhere, but the environment basically rules and selects. So we're so arrogant, human beings, we write books and we follow the books and we create religions around the books, et cetera. And we say, we rule the world, we rule the creatures, we rule the women, all of that's nonsense, all of that's baloney. We are ruled by the biology, the microbiome in our intestinal tract. And by the way, the biology around us, we are formed in the image of Earth's biology. Let me repeat this so you may understand what I'm saying. It's almost like we're this raw, beautiful piece of marble and the environment, the microbiome in your intestine and connecting to the biology outside of us basically is Michelangelo who has a hammer and a chisel and he's forming you into, by the way, who you become. Now, by the way, if you've been eating nonsense food and under stress and not moving and not exercising, you have a Michelangelo that, by the way, is drunk. And so he's taking big chips out of your body. He's destroying you. He's killing you. And you're saying, I don't know what's wrong. Well, I know what's wrong. You are arrogant and you basically think that you are ruling the universe and the rule universe is ruling you. Our bodies employ two methods in selecting the bacteria passaging through the system. And we're going to show you what that looks like. Nutrient availability plays an essential role and has an enormous influence shaping the microbiome. So now here's where we start to talk about nutrition. Next week on Saturday at one o'clock, I'm really going to get down to it. I'm going to give you the, the dirty science, the, the clear science on why eating these things destroy your health. But today we're going to show you the end result of it. So I'm doing this backward, actually, in reverse. So if you don't have nutrition, you cannot have healthy bacteria. Because think of healthy bacteria as little people. I don't know, they probably are more important than we are. And imagine if I took you and said, I'm going to lock you in the closet for four months and I'm not going to give you any nutrition. I'm just going to give you good water. At least it's good water, right? When I open the door, I'm going to find a person who is demise. No question about it. So if I am equating a healthy bacteria in your intestinal tract as a person, they need to have nourishment just like you do. This is generally what we nourish our bodies with. Uh, let me preface nourish with big quotes around it. Dietary diversity is basically non-existent. Economic pressure to greater food production, because now we have, compared to 1920, 2 billion people. Now we have over 8 billion, bordering on 9 billion people. So a lot more food production. But by the way, what they're producing is not food. Now, if they started to eat plant-based foods, we'd have enough food for 50 times more people than we have on the earth right now. And we call these beige foods. That was my entire diet. There was nothing exciting in any of that food. The rare time I ate a vegetable at my family's home, it was cooked to a point it looked beige at that point. So the methods and growing population craving these dangerous, unbelievable non-foods. Agriculture, both plant and animal, and the prevalence of pesticides and antibiotics have effectively destroyed our bodies 
immune-boosting intestinal bacteria. Now, this is the first time I'm bringing you into why this is so important. We've mentioned the word, or the words, I should say, immune system. Now, that's where all of your immune system comes from. Over 80% of your immune system comes from a healthy bacteria in your intestinal tract, your fauna and flora. If you have a lot of unhealthy bacteria, what do you think that does to your immune system? Well, here are these little beautiful villia that are actually like hula dancers, as you notice. Well, let's do this. If you're not driving, let's go back and forth. This is the exercise period of the program. <laughs> you know, basically, they move back and forth, pushing hopefully plant-based organic raw food through you. And that's what they're built to do and meant to do. Now, can you imagine if you put the pasty food, the beige food, the over-processed food, the chemicalized food, the animal food in? This sticks inside between these villia. And you end up having to detox an awful lot. I know when I started to detox, back when I was a 20-year-old young man, I thought I was literally going to die with what was coming out of me because I never ate anything that had any revel revelance to, to nutrition. Mm -hmm.